I had so much work to do and a full-time job at the same time. But I had three weeks to get this ready to go to hit the road. And that three weeks went by really, really fast. Welcome back to my camper demo, day one. I am going to try to do anything what I would consider structural, meaning physical changes to the camper that are not cosmetic, or they're not solely cosmetic. I wanna get those things done first because they are more important, and I don't wanna like, I don't wanna scratch the paint. <laughs> I don't want to get the whole thing painted and then make changes and it look crappy. So um, we're going to start by replacing the lock on the door. A uh, little unknown, known, I don't know. Apparently a lot of people know this. I didn't. This is the first camper I've ever owned. The lock on the door is apparently, I don't know that I would say universal, but the keys are very similar. Um, so a lot of campers can be unlocked with the same key. So the door key that I have is <clears throat> G49 is what it says on it. I don't know. Maybe they've already been changed once. But then the little storage comp compartments, those are like for real, for real the same. So CH751, this key would probably unlock most camper storage compartments. So we're going to start by replacing the locks. Also, the good thing about this is that it has a keypad. I don't have to worry as much about locking the keys inside, which if you ask my mom how many times I did that as a teenager in my car, um, the stats are not in my favor. So this will prevent that from happening. And who would be there to save me while I'm in the desert? No one. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Start um, replacing this. Okay, so this is 10 minute install. We'll see. All right. It is 3.55. That's backwards. Let's see about this 10 minute install. This is the back. It goes on the inside. This is the outside. So you can put the keys in. We have a little remote. We have keys just in case and something that looks important. Step one, remove old handle. Remove all existing hardware and thoroughly clean door handle area. Okay, so I'm gonna say the plate. It's already 357. We got eight minutes left. I didn't film the process of building out my van. Aside from a few snippets that made it onto my Instagram story, it was all business, and that's probably a good thing. Because trust me, when I tell you that I mess up so much, so much, I mean it. And the simple task of changing out the door lock on the camper was absolutely no exception. I spent entirely too long trying to screw the plate in. For some strange reason that I did end up figuring out after about 10 minutes, I just couldn't get the screws to catch. I tried and tried and tried, and then... I wonder if these screws are the wrong ones. But fear not, for although she makes mistakes, she is never too good to go back to the instruction manual and catch that mistake. And sure enough, the screws weren't catching because, well, they were the wrong screws. So I swapped them out for the right ones, made another big mistake that I didn't film, and we were back in business. Okay, to program, the default code on your handle is 1234. Follow the prompt to complete programming or to charge your, change your code. What? Until the handle responds with a prompt. I think it's going to talk to me. Let's see. Enter new code, then press lock. Enter new code, then press lock. I can't show it to you. Oh no. Really? New code accepted. Nothing happened. Oh. Aha! 
Look at that. Cool. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it's locked. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, first task is done, I think. I may need to do some more working on it because you have to pull pretty hard to get it to close. But I've seen other people on YouTube say that they have the same problem, so I don't know. It may just be something we have to deal with. If you're wondering how long it took, if it was truly a 10 minute install, it was not. It was a 35, 40 minute install. But part of that time was spent because I locked myself inside of the camper. Don't ask, only I am capable of doing such weird things. But it happened and now we're gonna move on to the next task. In preparation of painting this entire camper from head to toe, I needed to remove all of these absolutely horrendous curtain balances and the blinds. This was a simple task, one that I didn't mess up. But I also had big plans for the dinette. I needed to reconfigure it pull it out some, make it larger and more couch-like. This is the area where I will be both working my full-time job Monday through Friday and laying down watching Netflix until my brain cells decompose and my dogs claim it as their own. That's right, making this area more comfortable meant ripping it apart and basically starting over. So that's exactly what I did. chapter, um, you're correct. And it's not so much that you missed a chapter as much as it's my camera died um, when I was filming me ripping apart the dinette. And I'm going to give a really cheesy metaphor and say it's not that I couldn't charge the camera, I just couldn't find the charge within myself to film. But that ended up being because I had so much work to do and a full-time job at the same time. So, I mentioned in the last video that I had three weeks to get this ready to go to hit the road. And that three weeks went by really, really fast. I did not meet my goal of being on the road by Christmas, but I was only off by like three days so not that far um 
So in three and a half weeks, it doesn't sound like I did a lot, but I installed five solar panels, ran the wiring through the fridge vent, down through the floor of the camper, up to the front of the camper and back into the floor so it could go into the next thing I did, an upgraded electrical system. I do not have a generator, I did not replace the batteries, and I did not um, do like a big overhaul of the system. Um, I'll have to talk about what I ended up doing in another video because I haven't seen anybody else do this and I thought it was very clever, but that was a task. I, thank God, had help installing the backup camera, would not be driving this thing without one. Um, my mom reworked the cushions on the dinette because I pulled it out, made everything bigger. I wanted to have like the largest couch-ish area. I'm holding my phone, by the way, because I made a list of everything I did because I didn't want to forget. So my mom was working on that. Um, I replaced the roof vent on in the bathroom, which took hours just to like peel all of the butyl tape and the lap sealant up and replace it with a max air fan. Um, I primed the walls and the cabinets and painted them not once, but twice. I'm still really mad about it. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I replaced all the hardware on the cabinets and had to then put them back on. Um, painted and remodeled the bathroom a little bit. Mom also helped with that one. Thank you, Mom. You're a wallpaper expert. I had to order all the stuff, you know? Like, every night when I was done working, and I would be out here working until, like, 10 or 11 o'clock every night. And then when I would go inside to go to bed, I had to think, like, what do I need? Um, I need a hose. I need... I don't even know because I bought so much stuff. I needed locks for places you don't realize you need locks in a camper. There was a lot of stuff to order, which requires a lot of brain power. Is my battery dying? Yes. I had to pack and move in to the camper. I had to learn how everything works. But the biggest things that were required of me in that three and a half work, three and a half weeks, I had to finish selling the van. When I bought the camper, I had a pending offer and it took a few weeks for everything to get done. So I had to finish doing that. And then I had to find and purchase a truck. Uh, that was horrible. Don't recommend doing that in a, a time crunch. Um, once I had the truck, needed to install a bed cover. Mom helped with that again. And then the big thing, I had to learn how to drive. I had to learn how to hitch and unhitch the trailer, how to back up. And if I'm being honest, I should have spent more time doing that. But if I had stayed in Tennessee any longer, I wouldn't have had time to get out west without taking off work. There's good news and bad news. The bad news is I didn't film any more of the demo and the remodel or me getting on the road for a while. Going back to not having the charge to pick up the camera, I also found it really hard to start filming once I was back on the road. I spent the first probably four weeks just kind of enjoying having space to stretch out and enjoying being back on the road in general. Learning the ins and outs of my new rig, learning what was going to work for me, what was comfortable, what was uncomfortable, and just relaxing. And it was really, really nice. So. I did finally pick up the camera, I'm back at it, but the good news is that means next week we're going to pick up like we didn't lose any time. Um, you'll see me in Arizona next week. I am filming right now from California, but I spent six weeks in Arizona, so I'm going to pick back up with our adventures in true girl and two van dog style back to a normal video which some of you i think will be very happy about we're back to hiking i'm back to sharing cute videos of my dogs and i'm back to sharing the most incredible sunsets i've ever seen see you next week